Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. Surprise, I'm at my animation desk. We are going to do some traditional drawing today. We haven't done that in a long time. And so uh, I thought I'd bring you over to my other desk where I do all that. And we're going to have some fun. And uh, let's see, it's August 13th. It's Tuesday. We're in a new week. We had a great week last week. Um, and uh, uh, this week and next week and half of the week after that, it's for us, it's going to be all about getting ready, ready for the Lightbox Expo. That's a cue to you, Dustin. The Lightbox Expo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more time. It's up. It's up. Oh, there we go. I was looking at the wrong screen. Um, yeah, this this here's the live stream. Okay, mm -hmm. the up there that's the actual. Gotcha. <laughs> so Lightbox Expo, September sixth through the eighth in Pasadena, California. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be around three hundred of your favorite artists for three days: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we're gonna be there. Uh, we've got a booth along with a lot of amazing talent that's out there. Um, it, for us, when we go to CTN, we go to Lightbox, we go to these expos in Los, in uh, California. Um, yes, it's uh, I love teaching and I love selling and I love all that stuff. But for me, it's really cool to catch up with everybody. It's that one time of year where we get to meet up with a lot of our peers and trade stories and be inspired and all kinds of stuff. And we get to see you guys. So um, hopefully you can be out there. It's on. It's in Pasadena, September sixth through the eighth, and uh, uh, it's going to be a blast. Like I said, we've got we've got a booth, but I'm also going to be teaching and demoing four different times during that weekend, uh, and then also I'm going to be getting together with Proco uh, over at his booth and doing a demo over there. So there's five different demos and lectures that I'm going to be doing over the weekend. At least. And then, uh, and then also there's meetups during the night. If there's time in there, which I'm not sure that there will be, but if there is time, I'm going to try to do a meetup at the LA Zoo and do uh, some drawing. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to have time for that. We're going to try to work it in. Uh, but that's, uh, that's definitely something that we're going to try to do. And so, uh, so that's the Lightbox Expo, September 6th through the 8th. That's our big focus between now and then. Also on Thursday, I've got another big announcement that uh, I can't tell you yet, but I want you to anticipate it so you'll be there Thursday. So I'm, an annou I'm announcing that I'm going to have an announcement. Announcing you're going to have an announcement. Yeah, like on that. Thursday. Um, also, what have we got? We got uh, Patreon. I want to mention Patreon. I've got a brand new Patreon page that's slowly building up with uh, followers, uh, uh, patrons, I should say. And uh, I really would love for you to go over and check it out. Um, for a dollar, five bucks, uh, ten bucks a month, there's some really cool rewards. You can get images, you can get Photoshop files, and you can get exclusive streams. And this week, uh, it's either this week or next week, we're doing our first stream just for our Patreon members. And because the Patreon group is so small, we might be opening it up to some portfolio reviews. And so if that's something you're interested in, you might want to jump over there and uh, possibly get your portfolio reviewed. Uh, because if it gets too big, I can't do it for everybody. But uh, this is something that I'd like to start doing. And uh, Patreon is one of the ways that we're thinking about doing it. And that's a mere 10 bucks a month. So um, check it out. It's over at patreon.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. And um, like I said before, when, you know, if you can help us out on Patreon, that helps us continue to do our, our courses and videos and everything else and live streams and everything that you guys like so much. So there's Patreon. And then we also have our back to school sale that is still happening. And, uh, and, oh, you know what we didn't do, Dustin? We didn't pull up uh, Deep Thoughts over here. Oh. Yeah, so we got to get Nick over here. But um, we've got... Uh, so you're going to have to use my laptop, I think. Do you use a laptop? Yeah, let's pull over Deep Thoughts first. But um, uh, we've got my back-to-school sale. You, gotta switch. Oh, you got this one. slide switch. Good. Oh, I know, I got you doing three different things. Dustin's going like a champ. Going like a champ. Where is... <laughs> Uh, Deep thoughts. Uh, you got to go up to bookmarks. Go up to bookmarks. Over to the left. Oh, over to the left. Over. And then, uh, so, <laughs> sorry, we're stalling out. We, it, are you sure it's on the left? No, Dustin, it's up in bookmarks up top. Here, hold on one second. I got to show Dustin something. Oh, here it is. 
Do they go down to deep thighs? Right there. There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. Gotcha. And, and you have to shrink that window up to this big, this one fourth. And uh, so um, our back to school sale is still happening. It's twenty five percent off of everything on the site, plus uh, fifty percent off uh, for students and teachers for memberships and streaming. So that's a big deal. That's a big savings. Yep, Dustin's gonna drag over deep thoughts for me. There we go, and there you go, perfect. Yeah, you want me to shrink that up? No, no, you can just leave it the way it is. All right, and you can see Nick. No, just, just pull him one. over to the left there a little bit. There you go. Yeah, good. Um, there we go. And then, uh, oh, and then our our. Um, our uh, perspective, uh, perspective, my persnickety, <laughs> my perspective course is still in pre-order, so you can still get a deal on that. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty. You can still get a deal on that, and uh, uh, that's over on the website creatureartteacher.com, and that's my linear perspective course that is in pre-sales right now you can get it for 40 percent off you're never going to get it that low and it covers everything uh no that's uh yes we we set it up that way nick because we had to change seats around so we meant for the slide just to be there by itself uh nick was just saying i can't see aaron just the slide uh so anyway um the perspective course uh covers 1.2 point three point perspective it covers projection it covers uh, how to think, do things to scale. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. Everything that I know about linear perspective, I put into this course. It also covers shadows. It covers uh, reflections, um, all kinds of neat stuff. So if you get this course, you're going to be an expert on perspective by the end of it. I guarantee it. I think we covered everything. I believe so. So I gave myself a challenge uh, starting yesterday, Sunday. I gave myself a challenge. I realized I only had two and a half weeks left before Lightbox. And I wanted to have a bunch of original art ready for everybody. And so I gave myself a challenge to do, uh, on average, ten drawings a day between now and uh, by the time we leave. And if I do that, uh, that gives me, oh, about, about 200 drawings. Now, I might not hit ten, but I'd like to have at least 100 to 150 drawings started yesterday uh, I got nine drawings done but two of them were a bust uh, because I was using the wrong utensil I finally found the right the right pens and uh, and I'm doing lots of little pen and inks and uh, so I want to show you uh, here's a down shooter go to the down shooter and these are little ink drawings they're nine by 12 inch ink drawings I'm gonna put my spectacles on that uh, I did yesterday and uh, this is one I did this morning. But I just wanted to show you that these are going to be drawings that are going to be available um, at our booth at Lightbox. I'm going to be selling all of these drawings. Now, one of the things I'm also going to do is we're going to scan all of them. And I think we might make a book out of all of them, call it 100 Drawings or something like that. Hey, let me guess, that's going to be my, my job. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably scan them along the way. But it's just, you know, I'm a huge fan of Heinrich Clay. If you don't know Heinrich Clay, look him up. Uh, it's H-E-I-N-R-I-C-H-K-L-E-Y, Heinrich Clay. And uh, he was a wonderful pen and ink artist that did a lot of animals, uh, elephants especially, doing human activities, like ice skating. And uh, I always love that. And uh, so... Uh, these are some of the drawings, or all the drawings that I did yesterday. This is definitely kind of a drawing in the style of Heinrich Clay. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of his, and uh, um, I love, and I love, you know, doing these things that these little animal drawings that have all this personality. And they, um, and this is one I'm working on right now. I was going to save it um, until uh, until it was time to shoot, but then. I was just sitting around for an hour and I don't want to waste any time. So I've got a little bit to finish on this giraffe over here and a couple little details. And then we'll do another one. We'll do a new one uh, live. Live and in person. Live and in person. So without any further ado, I'm going to start drawing. And uh, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. We moved the microphone around. And uh, 
kind of tested it. Kind of. Kind of did a typical, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, that water's delicious. Forgot. What's that? Forgot to mention. Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dustin's here, too. So, anyway, let's just get going. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, nope, so, <laughs> so, as usual, uh, I've got Dustin here. And he's going to be manning questions, and uh, I've got uh, Nick in Sarasota, Florida, and he's going to be manning questions. And uh, with that, I'm going to just start drawing. One of the things I like about Heinrich Clay's drawings is just how he just puts these animals in a situation, and you can fill in with your own story. And that's kind of one that I'm trying to do here. I, can't, I mean, I've kind of got a caption for this, but uh, um, we've got a couple of different captions. Vedanta's, Vedanta had a good one. It was uh, voice command, voice command. I can't get voice command. Voice then, command. Yeah, mine, mine was, uh, and Bob realized in about two seconds that the monkeys were right. He shouldn't have bought the laptop. Right. So I just like, uh, I like little, doing little things like this that, you know, you just put animals in a situation and, and let the viewer kind of fill in the story. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is this kind of the technique of what I'm doing uh, with the ink drawing. You'll notice that the line work, I try to follow the form. And that's something Heinrich Clay did a lot, is uh, follow the form of the... Uh, let me just make sure I got the right pen here. I got, a, I got the wrong pen. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, you know, you, with the line work, you just follow that form, and it really, really, really gives that the drawing a lot more well, form and I you know I try to stay fairly loose with it too so I got a little bit of giraffe back here just want her to come down I'm just gonna shade her in I want to push her back into the distance did you yeah. get to watch um, uh, Serengeti on Saturday uh, what was it Saturday night Sunday night no, I um, <clears throat> I don't have cable. Is it on? Uh, is it on anything that's streaming? Uh, I don't know. If it's on anything that's streaming, let me know, and I'll watch it because I definitely want to see it. I've just given up my cable, so um, I can only watch streaming uh, channels. I think we might be doing the similar thing with other cable based shows uh, like they do on places like Netflix where they do the fir they do the season through the year like live uh -huh. and then once the season's over then they move that entire season over to like one of these stream channels like Hulu or yeah. Netflix like one of those places well if that's the case then I'll have to wait so I'm just quickly laying in this giraffe You'll notice I stay, for stuff like this, I try to stay really loose with it. And and I'm, I'm constantly thinking about light over dark and dark over light in order to get things to read. Like I want this shoulder, I want the elephant's shoulder to read, so I'm pushing the giraffe kind of darker into the background right along there. And we'll get a nice dark spot on that giraffe. Somebody commented, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. i got to illustrate that. That might be, that's what I'd like. Maybe uh, you guys can give me, you know, in the in the vein of what I'm trying to do here, if you can, you know, like a saying like that. I like that saying, there's an elephant in the room. And illustrate it. And give me the challenge to illustrate it. I like that. If someone was, at, was asking, uh, for the second drawing, could you do a... Uh, tap, tapper, tapir, ta taper, taper, and a okapi, okapi, or okapi, okapi, uh, running around and having a good time. Uh, that's pretty specific, and I got to pull up a lot of reference for that. Those aren't ones that I have in my head, yeah. but um, I can do that at a later date. But uh, uh, YouTube question: How do you approach your ink drawings in combination with Copic markers? Well, I make sure that my ink drawings are waterproof uh, because I do the ink drawing first, and um, and then uh, and then I do the, and then I lay in the color right over the top. 
the color I don't do Copic markers like some people where they really render with it um, I don't render with my with Copic markers I just lay in some color here and there <laughs> and not even color I just lay down tone Somebody quoted, an elephant never forgets. Oh, that's a good one. I need to p uh, figure out some uh, something with action. I love This one was a lot of fun. This one right here. And it was just, just elephants ice skating. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun trying to figure it out and come up with a pose. <laughs> Bowl in a china shop? Oh, that's a good one. Frog caught in the throat for the giraffe. <laughs> a lion taking a lie detector test. <laughs> <laughs> They're streaming the Lion King. Oh, wait, there. Oh, okay, never mind. That one's a uh, actual... That was not a quote. That was an actual, actually saying they are streaming the Lion King. Oh. <laughs> Where? I think it was on... Are they streaming on uh, Discovery Channel? Is that what you're saying, Mac? Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. So, oh, the other two. The other thing, my, my equipment. The paper I'm using. I love this paper. This is Strathmore Toned Gray. 9 by 12. It's really good. This is... Uh, these are all sketches from Wyoming. I'm just using a, I only did a couple pages in here. These are some of the sketches that I did while I was in Wyoming last time. I thought it was Montana. No, yeah, in Montana, sorry, it was yeah. Montana. <laughs> and uh, there's some grizzly, or uh, black bear. Black bears that we saw along the road, and I did some sketches. I but did then, all the shooting. Yep, yeah, Dustin did all the shooting. I'm sorry Dustin didn't get your credit. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then all the rest of it's blank, so I'm just using that paper uh, to do these drawings and so um, it's really nice quality paper and then uh, what's nice is that it's half tone so I can you know and then uh, I can do the ink drawing and also with my jelly roll jelly roll right there jelly I don't know if it's gonna focus 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 no it's not gonna focus with my jelly roll pen uh, I can do the white lay the white uh, tones in like you see here so it works really really nice makes really great drawings and as for pens go I found these I went yesterday I've been doing brush pens a lot and I decided not to use brush pens I wanted to go back to like a not quite a, a ballpoint but like a steel ball something that was going to mimic um, what uh, Heinrich Clay used which is uh, croquil and so I found these steel ball and gel pens at Office Depot and you know, I got a pack of twelve right here for like eight bucks or nine bucks, and then another pack for another eight bucks. And they're different sizes, so they're 0 0.7 or 0 0.07, 0 0.05, and uh, and so they're just a really, really great. Um, and they go down. Uh, I lay in very lightly, as you can see, little pencil pencil guidelines, and uh, the ink goes over the pencil. Sometimes you get pens. That won't lay in over the over the uh, over pencil. It won't it won't it won't write. It's really frustrating. So in this case, it does. So I just keep it nice and loose. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see the drawing a little bit more. That's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. I just I want them to be able to see the line work how loose it is. Yeah, you know. Uh, um, Mystic Wolf, <laughs> Mystic Wolf Art, or it could be Mystic Wolf Fart, asks, "Could you do a wolf for your next drawing? Hungry like a wolf? Oh, that's a good one." Ooh. Just be like, which one has more memory, the elephant or the Mac? <laughs> <laughs> did you color these sketches with uh, Copic markers? Yes, I did on some of them. Not all of them. Only a couple of them.
So I'm just trying to keep it nice and uh, I want the line to have some life to it. How about flies trying to land on, on a zebra because of landing stripes? But since zebras have billions of stripes, the flies hit and miss. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the composition uh, to bigger animals. Is this one currently being drawn with Copic? No, this is a tool. T. There it is. Tool. tool. Like you, Dustin. You're a tool. Oh, thanks. Hey, <laughs> that's the nicest thing you ever said to me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Couldn't resist. <laughs> tool. T U L. Just like me. <laughs> have you ever seen a Komodo dragon? I have seen a Komodo dragon. They're awesome. Never seen one in the wild. But I've seen oh, it. Just don't ask that. Yeah, I've never been to the island of Komodo. Where did you get the gel pens? I don't believe I saw any any uh, at my local Michaels. Uh, they're there. I got these. I got at Office Depot. But I'm pretty sure Michael sells them as well. I'm creating a story for fun, and I ran into a oh, funny great. problem. Uh, my villain. For story reasons, I feel that it has to be designed using round shapes. But in theory, round shapes for villains is a no-no. At least that's no. the theory that I hear all the time. Do you think it, it's possible to make this work? Yes, of course. Don't every theory is meant to be broken. You can't. You can make. You can make villains that are round. Yes, that's. Don't don't stick so hard to some rule that somebody told you that you are sacrificing uh, creativity. No, you can absolutely make a villain of, out of round shapes. Do a tiger singing "Eye of the Tiger." <laughs> <Please. laughs> that's a great one. I'm gonna do that. Uh, do you prefer digital or traditional drawing? Um, you know, it really depends on my mood. I think at the end of the day, I mean, I love digital drawing, don't get me wrong, because I love the ability to um, just sit and create something really quickly in full color. Um, but I have to say, I love having something, you know, tangible like this. And... Uh, there's a bit, you know, that's a big deal to me. So I'd have to say, probably traditional is a, you know, slightly more favorite of mine. But I love, love, love digital. I I, I can't resist reading this one out. I'm gonna go <laughs> wide again. How's your animation short coming along? Did you finish it? The snow lion thing. <laughs> the snow lion thing. Uh, no. <laughs> We're not done yet, and it's Snow Bear. <laughs> <laughs> snow Lion. Do a cat in purgatory. I want you to see, one of the things I really studied with Heinrich Clay is how loose he would get. And not really worry about it. And that's it's and it really gave his his ink line a lot of life and so and he would e actually actually go against the grain on some of his some of the work just to get the right values and tones and stuff draw a quote unquote hot dog <laughs> maybe like a super dog that has like his Superhero suit, but is on fire. <laughs> He's a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do. Uh, I like the the eye of the tiger thing. The tiger singing. Mm -hmm. Do you find any animals scary or unsettling, like komodo dragons or scorpions? No. 
Now, I find animals, obviously, that you need to respect. Ooh, Gabby just came on. Hey, Gabby. Aaron, I gotta say, I absolutely love these sketches you're doing lately. Says Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. It's fun just to kind of kick back and go back into storyboard mode, you know, because it's you're trying to tell a little bit of a story through an image. And, uh, and like I said, if you guys go to uh, Lightbox, all of these drawings, all 100 of them, or more, if I get more done, will be available for sale. YouTube question, is it possible to practice drawing incorrectly such that you won't improve? If so, how do you avoid it? Well, one of the things you can do incorrectly is just to do the same thing over and over again or just stay in your comfort zone. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see are young artists that have grown up learning how to draw anime or other comics uh, in certain styles and they, uh, they, they refuse to go and try anything else. And when I try to tell them to try something else, they get really defensive. <laughs> but uh, you got to you got to break that those those uh, some of those habits because you won't grow otherwise. You can always go back, uh, but you gotta you gotta try to you know try other things. Since you're talking about Komodo dragons, it's World Lizard Day today. And it was World Lion Day. And then it was World Elephant Day, which I luckily I got some elephants done. And then it's World Lizard Day. Wow. Yeah. Have you seen the two new volumes from Heinrich Clay to uh, art? They were published no. in 2012. Volume 1 has a lot of paintings I've never seen before. No, I've never seen that. I'll have to check it out. Eh? There, so there's my... There's my little composition right there. So now I want to go in with my white pen. Just hit a couple of areas, like his tusks. Have you ever met Paul Cal, the pencil artist? Paul Cali? Paul Cali? Never did. Hi, Aaron. Planning on coming to Denmark anytime soon? Not anytime soon. Um, we, uh,. A lot of our travel is uh, kind of taking it. We're taking a little bit of a break from travel, trying to settle in, get a get a little bit more uh, of some of our other stuff done, like Snow Bear. And um, yeah, this next year is really going to be focused on uh, a lot of domestic stuff here in the United States. And a lot more uh, master classes. We uh, we had a great time with our master class here uh, a week and a half ago, and we want to start doing more of those uh, uh, here in Florida and also around the country. So that's we're going to be focusing on those quite a bit over the next year. So are these going to be staying as originals, or will you be printing copies for the uh, light box? I'm sorry, say that again. Um, are you going to be Selling just the originals, or will there be uh, copies you're going to print out? We may make copies. I'm not sure. Right now, it's just going to be the originals. But like I said, I might turn this, uh, if I get 100 of them done, I might turn it into a little book. As well. So he's saying it's also left-handed day. Well, there you go. I'm doing <laughs> that. I am left-handed. Uh, to which question, uh, suggestion, what about a groundhog golfing like he's at a business meeting? That's kind of funny. <laughs> Not the golfer, golfer! <laughs> Not miners, miners. <laughs> when are we going to have Aaron Blaze World Day? <laughs> <laughs> Probably next year. Go, get ever, those nice white tusks. Sorry, Dustin, go no. ahead. Uh, would you ever draw prehistoric mammals from the Ice Age, like a giant ground sloth, saber-toothed cat, shore-faced bear, or woolly rhinoceros? 
Like, would you ever draw any of those? Sure. Have you seen the Chronicles of Narnia? The Lion, the Witch, and the Road Drone? The Road Drone? Ward I have. Ward, Ward. Yeah. I like them. I feel like I'm having trouble saying that word, Ward You okay? Ward Wardrobe. Ward 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 So I'm just adding little highlights. I'm thinking about the light coming off of the uh, the monitor screen and how it might be hitting. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Whoops, the other way. And I shaded in here. I shouldn't. Have, I probably shouldn't have shaded it, but here. Is the animal drawing in Florida still going on in the, uh, going on this spring? I'm working on it. We are definitely working on it. If we can make it happen, which I'm pretty pretty confident we can, we are going to have some animal drawing here in the springtime. Another person suggests, uh, how about an escape goat? Scapegoat? For another drawing <laughs> idea. That's pretty funny. There we go. Yeah, I shouldn't have shaded in these these feet. I should have. Does the new live action Mufasa remind you of Aslan from from the movie Narnia? No, I think he's a lot better than Aslan. Go, go back and look at Aslan again. <laughs> People, you know, like every time I draw a tiger, it doesn't matter what the tiger looks like, and everybody goes, ooh, that looks like Shere Khan. It looks nothing like Shere Khan. They just see a tiger. It's the same thing with lions, I think. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it doesn't look anything like them. <laughs> Who'd win, win it if I Mufasa or Aslan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know Mufasa's going to win. Actually, no. Scar. Scar. <laughs> Scar. Just in the, the sidelines. Just adding a little bit of white on here to give him a little... I want him to be the center of attention. Really draw your eye in. Hi, Aaron. I just joined your Patreon page. Uh, hey, will, thank you. Will any of these line drawings be available for download since they are not digital? Um... If that's something you are interested in, then we can make them available. Yes, I can scan them and make them available. <laughs> How about raining cats and dogs? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the actual lion who played Aslan for the 2005 Narnia film resided in a lion sanctuary in Australia? I did not know that. That's wild, wild stuff. That's some wild, wild stuff. Went all the way down under. Down under. Went down under, put some prone, prawns on the barbie. Just adding a couple of light highlight touches here and there just to get him to pop a little bit Bella asks hi Aaron have you ever had a dream about an unknown animal like it wasn't in games of or movies or anything I think or IRL I don't know what that is in real you just life. saw it only in your dream or in real life oh, I gotcha uh, I don't know what the abbreviations are thanks yeah IRL stands for in real life gotcha is this real life is this real life <laughs> uh, no, I've never had uh, a dream like that, to be honest with you. i got to pull out another pen because this other one's starting to gum up on me. You uh, giraffes playing basketball? Giraffes playing basketball. I like that idea. It's going to give him a little bit of backlighting just to 
get him to pop a little bit. And just let it fade out. Let it fade. Let it fade. I'm just going to talk like Bob Ross right now. And I can create any animal I want because this is my world. It's, so. it's your world. He said, Aaron, I think you started Inktober a tad soon. <laughs> just, just a was tad. there a certain art style that you first gravitated towards? Uh, when I was a kid, I really gravitated toward uh, watercolors and ink drawings, actually. I recommend Daredevil Cheetah. Who wants to live forever? I remember there was an artist. Um, I used to get Audubon Magazine. It's a wildlife magazine here in the States. And, and uh, um, on the back, back in the 80s, in the backs of the magazines, they would uh, showcase a wildlife artist. And there's this one artist that did all these beautiful ink drawings of snowy owls. And I remember being just absolutely mesmerized by this guy and these drawings of snowy owls from the 70s. really beautiful. I think you and Mel Minton should challenge each other into a drawing duel. Are you down? I'm not going to challenge Mel. First of all, Mel's going to kick my butt. <laughs> and second of all, um, I'm not competitive like that with Mel. <laughs> I love Mel. Actually, I haven't seen Mel on Facebook very much lately. I wonder where Mr. Milton has been. Tim Hodge is here. Tim yeah. Hodge. And actually, Tim Hodge was the person I was talking about the uh, the lost art stuff. Um, and how much do you have? The what? Uh, the uh, Hein the Heinrich uh, um. Oh, the new Heinrich book. Clay volume. Uh, oh, book. Tim was the one that was saying that. I, I believe it was one. I believe it was Tim. Hodge. Oh, by the way, too, if you guys are interested in. Uh, cartoon animals and that sort of thing. Tim, who's on watching right now, Tim has put together a really beautiful course for us on drawing cartoon animals. It's really neat because he covers ink drawing like what we're doing today. Um, a little different, but it's you know in the same ballpark. And watercolor and caricature and really and covers you know really kind of the basics. It's definitely for a younger audience, but even for those people that are just barely starting out drawing. It's a really great course, and it's called you know drawing cartoon animals. How much so, do you, oh, once sorry. again, that's uh, creatureartteacher.com. Go check it out. All right, thought you were done. Um, and Tim is asking, how much do you have have to cheat real elephant anatomy in a drawing like this? Um, you know, I don't know because I'm I'm definitely giving it human elements, but I'm trying to. I'm really kind of digging into my knowledge of comparative anatomy where I'm kind of taking the same part of the human to, in order to hit the pose of a human and grabbing the same part of the elephant and just morphing it. So, you know, if you look at the forearms, the forearms are definitely bigger because of, that's their front leg. Um, but I try to keep it in the same kind of shape as a elephant's. Um, there's, it's, it's a little bit of morphing. You know, if you look at something like this, here I really tried to keep it as accurate as I could. I just really pushed the pose. Uh, same with this one. I, oh, I got to pull out. This one right here. Um, I really tried to keep the anatomy accurate, but I twisted it. You know, like here, this elbow wouldn't be this long. And it wouldn't be able to twist it in this way. But I try to do it in a way that's believable. That's the thing. I just want, I want, you know, if I put them in a, in a certain pose, I want that pose to be believable. So, um, like this here. Like this lion. This lion could actually get in this pose. The elephant um, could kind of get in this pose. It couldn't really walk like this, and but it's you know it's it's 
It's believable. That's the thing. I want them to be believable. And then obviously that's just a regular cap post. Yep. Was there a YouTube question? What paper would you recommend if I want a smooth drawing pencil but also work with some watercolor? You can get anything. Get a nice heavy hot press watercolor paper. Hot press watercolor paper is smooth and it's made for watercolor as well. So hot press watercolor. Hi Aaron, I mentioned this once before and you seemed open to the idea, uh, but would you please do a dragon tutorial? My daughter is struggling with the anatomy and how to combine dinosaur, bird, and snake anatomy to create a an uh, anatomically correct dragon. Okay, well first of all there is no anatomically correct dragon. Because dragons aren't real, you can make it anything you want. But if you're talking about creating one that's believable, and I know that's what you're saying, then yes, we can definitely do that. Let's get this little Apple logo on here. Apple? Yeah, just for Dustin. <laughs> there we go. I've done ink over uh, for the last few years with actual ink. But do you think it would be bad if I did it digitally this year? Yep. It's called Inktober. It's not called Digital Ober. Digital Ober. Digital Ober. Digital Ober. Or Pixel Ober. It's Pixel called Inktober. <laughs> so, yeah, do it with ink. And I think you, you just want to go to the digital because you want to make it easy. Keep it hard, baby. I, I think the uh, digital stuff should be put in December and call it Pixember. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so, there it is. So, there's my uh, next drawing. That was, they're getting more and more complex. Oh, that didn't write. If you could have worked on Tarzan, which character would, uh, would you like to have animated? Kerchek. The, the leader? Either Tarzan or Kerchek, yeah, the gorilla leader. Kerchek I loved. I think Bruce Smith did Kerchek. So there we go. Another one bites the dust. Da -da -da. The dust. So you can see the details. They're kind of fun. And they go pretty quick. I do one of these drawings in about an hour. Um, Charles on YouTube suggests idea. Play on the stork delivering babies. Oh! Bingo! What? I like that. What is it? Storks delivering babies. Oh. That'd be fun. Yep. It would. Oh, does that does that show up good there? Yeah. Good. Uh, let's do another one. So this is what I do. So here's the paper. Uh, I just go to a page and tear it out. Are you going to film anything from the Lightbox Expo? I'm sure we'll do some filming there, yeah. And this, this, uh, the the paper is perforated along the edge, right by the uh, where the little shards of where where you tear it out. It's all perforated right there, so you can just tear that off. You end up with a nice, clean sheet of paper. Let me go a little wider on that. A little wider still. There we go. <laughs> African wild dogs having a wild party. These are all really specific. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to some so I don't have to pull up reference because otherwise I gotta pull up reference. Could you try a snow leopard from the next one? It's been a while. It's been a while since I drew a snow leopard. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Oh my pen up high. <laughs> oh, let's see. How much pre-sketch do you do on a piece like that before you make it final, if you do one at all? Well, I do a pre-sketch. I definitely do. Because I want to make sure that I'm hitting all my posing, silhouettes, all that kind of stuff uh, clearly. 
So like uh, our tiger that we're going to do right now, I want him to be singing Eye of the Tiger. So I'm getting his head here. I want to get the body coming down. There's so many interesting suggestions. Uh, I got in late. Uh, what was the uh, prompting? Just any animals doing uh, animals doing stuff. I just I like to I'm I'm doing all these ink drawings, and uh, uh, I like just creating an image and letting the the viewer fill in the uh, what it might be. says crazy like a fox crazy like a fox crazy like a fox are there hippos in the back dancing with the tiger <laughs> so I got a nice sweeping uh, kind of composition I want here but I don't like I don't like what's going on with my with the arms I want a nice clear silhouette like I've got going, but let me turn this around. <laughs> There's just a werewolf, but it's a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> what? A werewolf chihuahua. Because <laughs> you know how werewolves are usually like big wolf, I human get it. wolves. But it's a werewawa. <laughs> werewawa. <laughs> so here I just I'm just scribbling, trying to get How about a uh, for the next one uh, a lizard playing a guitar in the sun. Lounge lizard by Jim Morrison. <laughs> Oh, Rock and Robin. There you go. You can see it's like a red, like a red Robin bird with like electric guitar just shredding, and all the other birds are like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> well, here I'm just right now. I am going to try to figure out. Is your tiger singing, it's the eye of the me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the eye of the me. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over. So whoever buys this is going to get to have a scribbly drawing on the back. Almost every single one of these drawings has me starting over. Because i got to start, i got to start, I don't like that pose. It was kind of cliched. I want to get something that's a little more, you know, uh. That's what was asking me a question. Uh, Dustin, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you draw architectural designs? I think I heard something like that several live streams ago. I don't, I never really drew architectural stuff like buildings. I mainly drew vehicles like mechs and tanks and spaceships all that kinds of stuff like that's that was my go-to for drawing back then this is just a red rooster singing I'm a red rooster <laughs> Okay. This looks like he's just blowing on it. I 
I'm going to try some different posing here. You guys are going to see me struggle and figure it all out. The eye of the me. <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy, isn't it? I like it. Have you ever drawn a Wolverine? No, I never have drawn. Or a fox singing, what does the fox say? <laughs> uh, that one, that song would never go away. That one's not coming out either. I want to... Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got, you got it. it. You got it? You got I suppose, it? I suppose, yeah. Have you ever worked with Don Bluth? Never worked. I uh, know I've never worked with Don Bluth. No. You ever worked with Walt Disney? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No suggesting a bird playing Little Wing on the guitar. Yeah, baby. Well, Hendrix. <laughs> it says a uh, hyena is ro uh, skate rolling with helmets on. Roller skating with helmets on. Oh, I like that too. As I was saying, uh, an Italian stallion. Everybody, everybody, move! What is the hardest po? What is the hardest post you you can draw? Like, I think meant by hardest pose. Like, what's the most difficult pose? Oh, I don't know. There is one. I saw a post the other day from Tom Sita where they were trying to figure out what would be the hardest thing to animate. Mm. And it would be a horse on all fours walking down a spiral staircase. <laughs> <laughs> on all fours for a horse. But walking down a spiral staircase. <laughs> Manny says an Aaron Blaze musk ox or bison. <clears throat> oh, I like it. Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put his hand out like this. There we go. <laughs> There's like a comic strip suggestion here, but maybe you have a random animal singing lion sleeps tonight <laughs> with the lion nearby yelling, I'm trying to at least if you'd stop singing. <laughs> so he's playing, so it's just a uh, fox playing foxy lady. Ooh, foxy lady. Do you know Nikolai Lockerson? Lockerston. No. Trying to get that rib cage the right way. <laughs> A summer snow leopard at the beach. A leopard playing deaf leopard. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> I can't hear you. A deaf leopard. Aaron, do you know everyone on this earth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Draw, ever draw a bear from South America, the ones that has like sunglasses around the eyes. Spectacled bear. 
That's a spectacle bear. Spectacle bear. Your horse shouting, hold your horses. <laughs> Ooh, instead of uh, Jimi Hendrix, it's Lion Hendrix. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> what about Three Little Birds singing Three Little Birds by Ziggy Marley? <laughs> <laughs> I love these. <laughs> what about Sicilian Mob Frog? Don Do to Todellini. <laughs> the city with his pet gator. <laughs> I want to get his neck a little longer, so I'm going to just drop everything down. I want to get a little more negative space under that chin. Gonna make it a mouth that you can't refuse. Ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> How about walrus shouting, I am the walrus! Cuckoo, <laughs> could you? <laughs> That's actually really funny. This is coming out really flat, but might be a fun one to illustrate anyway. Do uh, pandas at a bamboo buffet? <laughs> or uh, four beetles playing instruments together? <laughs> the beetles! The beetles. Cat singing stray cat strut. <laughs> or shark singing Mac the Knife. God, there's so many. <laughs> another way another way to turn the head. Looking for Because a lot of times I'll sit with these and I'll just I'll play around with a pose. Gary's suggesting uh, animals morphed as famous uh, as famous pop culture people that look sim uh, that look similar. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm neglecting my uh, my questions here. Hold on. Uh, Twitch uh, suggestion: How about a secretary bird writing a note with a little snake for an ink pen? Those are these are all great the great suggestions. I'm gonna try I'm determined to get this lion to, or tiger to work. Manny's asking if Aaron drew himself as an animal, what who what would he draw himself as? A koala? Damn right. So uh, that's, this is a pose I like here. Oh, this was a good one from from uh, Anthony Burton. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to erase this guy right off. You're going to see a little underdrawing of him, but that's okay. Who cares? And Anthony's suggesting a buffalo soldier. Buffalo soldier, dreading like Rasta, was the buffalo soldier. America. All right, I like this pose, and so, and this is going to give me a chance. I'm just going to do part of his body. <laughs> a group of dogs asking themselves, "Wait, who let us out?" <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good one. <laughs> These are all nothing but suggestions. There's no questions. <laughs> We're down to put one in. Oh, a yeah. horse, a horse jockey riding a human in a race. <laughs> oh, that's funny. See, I like that right here. I'm gonna. I want to caricature it more too. Sometimes I get to really struggle with it. So I might 
bring out another piece of paper and get this centered more. Now I got to figure out his. Got to figure out the how that paw is going to be holding the microphone. Now I'm going to get another piece over here. We're just going to keep working it. Who is the best of the nine old men? The all nine, you know, all of the nine old men. Um, all of the nine old men were completely different. So I don't think there was a best. You know, Milt Call was probably the best draftsman, and so and so. You know, uh, Ward Kimball was probably the best at unique, weird designs and animation and. Um, you know, there's. What pencil hardness do you use for your initial sketching? Oh, the a, uh, probably H. I think this is an HB. How many uh, studios in America is actually producing uh, classical animation? I don't do know. Oh, somebody's asking, what are we dressing up as for Halloween? I, I don't know if I'm going to dress up this year. Or I just might find, try to find a, a simple costume. Oh, I don't dress up. We, um, but I do, uh, <clears throat> I do, um, love Halloween. We, the, I, uh, first of all, we get the most candy in the neighborhood out of everybody. Oh, my God. I, I, the past I, two years, I, I you, want to be that guy. The past two years, we would have so much candy, like hundreds of people would come through, yeah. and we would still like have half of it left. I mean, like the year before, uh, Austin got how much? How much money's worth of? A uh, ridiculous amount of money's worth of candy. It was just, oh, jeez, <laughs> but. Do. I'm still I'm still working on this. The movie Cars. Does Langley McQueen have car insurance or life insurance? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Some young, some young artists believe that professional artists never do bad drawings, and some even think they never erase, and they themselves feel that erasing is shameful. Where the heck do these thoughts come from? I don't know. <laughs> they definitely never hung out with me. <laughs> because I'm always, you know, I... Um, Glenn Keane used to say it really well. He he always used to get really nervous. He he'd say, "You know what? They're all they're they're going to figure out that I don't know any I don't know anything. They're finally going to figure it out." And and uh and yeah, that's how we feel as artists, you know? We just that's why I like doing this cuz doing these types of streams because uh you know, I don't I'm not any better than the next guy. I just struggle at it. I just I don't give up. And and I know there's a I, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, but uh, but other than that, I'm uh, I just don't give up. I don't give up easy. There we go. All right, I'll cut. I'll bite this bait. Seriously, nobody asked Aaron. Uh, how was it working with Walt Disney yet? <laughs> As an elephant in Hello, a could you make a video how to draw animals in the style of cave painting sometime? <laughs> That's very specific. Uh, I can try to do that. Somebody's all, all suggesting an elephant in a crystal shop. <laughs> oh yeah, like a yeah, like a that's like the the uh, bull in a china shop. Yeah. 
Do you have a favorite spot when out sketching and studying life? Yeah, I mean, there, yeah, Yellowstone. You like uh, you like the San Diego Zoo too, right? I do. Uh, Yellowstone, Alaska. I mean, there's yeah, places Alaska. all over, all over the world. I love. So here, I'm just trying to get a nice, really simple pose here. So he says, "Go fly to Florida to trick or treat at, at Aaron's house." <laughs> <laughs> we do have the best candy. So here, I feel like I'm getting something finally. I know I'd hit it eventually. It says a tiger tattooing a zebra. Oh, well, you know, I did come up with one. Uh, you know how people say a tiger can't change his stripes? Yeah. They just have a tiger that's all in plaid. <laughs> or you, or like you just see the tiger like tearing off a stripe like it's Velcro. Yeah. What are you doing? Changing with stripes. I think it'd be funny, like, seeing a whole bunch of horse out, out in the pasture and then having, like, like under a tree, like a horse getting striped up like a zebra. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Like, with paint, with, like, a paintbrush with a guy up over the side, like, like a tattoo horse, but it's just a straight-up paintbrush. <laughs> yeah. Just roughly going in. What's the difference between supervising animator and animating animation director? Uh, are both the same? No, an animation director is usually directing all of the animation for a project. That's everything. Then a supervising animator is usually supervising, at least when I when I was doing animation the way we did back in the 90s, a supervising animator was in charge of a character. But supervising animators have also been put, you know, they could be in charge of a sequence. You know, something like that. Yeah, baby. They would put a little collar on them. What do you think? So I was suggesting, how about 1950s lion, like, like having the mane slick back like a greaser? No, this guy is definitely singing the Eye of the Tiger. There. Now, if you feel like you've gotten too much graphite down, like I might have here, uh, I'm a stickler for anatomical structural perfection when using references from real life. But my sketches look almost lifeless, especially when drawing figures in motion or with expressions. Any tips that could help liven up my results while maintaining the realistic appearance? Yeah, just stop being a stickler. Go for the gesture first. Go for the dynamics. And, uh, and go beyond what you think the body can do and stick with it. Because we really can go beyond what a lot of people realize. That's the problem, I think, with a lot of... Um, uh, uh, stiff CG animation is a lot of them will come at it from a very analytical standpoint rather than trying to be dynamic yeah. and um, and it comes out looking stiff. Let me say that this tiger uh, is more of a crooner than a rock singer. Yeah, well, he's getting in there. <laughs> he's feeling it. So maybe he's crooning Eye of the Tiger. It's a brand new arrangement. The eye of the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Aaron and or Dustin, have you watched Tailspin? Love how they mix the Jungle Books with Tales of the Gold Monkey and more from other stories, old movies and other and old series. No, I've never seen it. 
I, I watched it uh, growing up. It was on um, uh, Cartoon Disney, I think it was. Yeah, it was Cartoon Disney. And, um, and yeah, I loved watching it all the time. I just don't remember any of the episodes. I just remember the opening. So I want you guys to remember how much I struggled on this. Um, only because I think we're going to have a pretty good drawing here. I feel it. I feel pretty good about this. But not, you know, none of these drawings come easily. Even looks like I'm trying to give him like a little goatee. Make it look like he's got a goatee. Hey, goatee. What has been the most entertaining experience when sketching in the city? What has been the most entertaining experience while sketching in the city? Uh, that's a very specific question. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been to a lot of really cool cities. The cities themselves have been, you know, really great and entertaining and very cool. There. Eric said, just hi, Aaron. What about something oxymoron like like a jumbo shrimp? Oh, that's a cool idea. How many types of directors are in a studio project? Um, well, it depends on the, t the, the departments, I guess. But, I mean, if you're thinking about director, there's really just one director. And then there's, you know, director of this or that, but still, it's still the, the main director still oversees those people. And then for the for the actual teams for like the animators or for or for uh, like sound or any of that like you get supervisors yeah that talk to the directors right? Mm hmm Arg Something's sticking to my arm. Arg 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 I don't know why, but maybe start thinking of the video I saw the other day where a guy was laying out on the beach, and uh, he was an old old guy, but he gets up and he starts trying to look for his phone, and it turned out the whole time he had his phone got stuck up to on his back. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for his phone <laughs> under his chair and everything on the beach, but it got stuck on his phone. He can't find it. It's like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> can you see this? I guess I can see this okay, right? Yep. Is it a little small? It might be a little small yeah. if you're watching it on a phone, but... I'd say it looks fun. I think that's a good, good size. You're watching it on a 32-inch screen. You want me to look on here? Yeah, look on your phone. Are you using an automatic pencil or a black ink pen? This is an ink pen. It's a, I'm using a tool, T U L, uh, gel pen, 0 0.05 millimeter. Is it a gel? Yeah, this, these right here. Gel. Gel. I'm gelling. See? Looks fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, do you have a favorite medium when painting, or is it pure digital? Oh, no. I, I, I like, uh, I really love watercolor. I love oil. Um, you know, there's all kinds of mediums that I love. 
get back. Well, when you guys hear a funny sound, you mimic each other and are satisfied after saying it a few times. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah we're, we're those kind, kind of people. How do you keep the face expressions appealing? Uh, I just keep working it and working it until I like it. <laughs> but, I, you know, there's certain rules that I follow. Um, like, you know, I try to make sure that I keep the expression simple. You know, that's number one. If you can keep that expression simple, then uh, you're off to the races really well. Putting in too many stripes here, but I'm just going to roll with it. I like it. The eye of the me. It's the eye of the me. I like that. I'm going to steal that. Whoever gave me that suggestion, thank you. <laughs> it's the eye of the me. Yeah. Yeah. If this was for Inktober, would you consider the graphite sketching you did before inking cheating? No. It's still an ink drawing. As long as like, the final product is ink and not any other. Everyone's still hung up on this whole cheating thing. What is cheating? Mm. There's no cheating, people. Now, someone asked earlier about if they should do it digitally, that's not cheating. That's just not doing it in ink. Yeah. So I, that's why I was saying, yeah, you should keep it in ink. Like it doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> if it's uh, if it's digital. Yeah, I like this guy. I'm giving him a little bit of a slick look. Get that head back. The one thing I'm always, I always try to make sure on a cat, just to make it look like a cat, to help make it look like a cat, is to get that break, you know, the head slopes this way and the nose slopes that way. With a dog, the head slopes this way and the nose would slope in the same direction. So one of the things that makes a cat look like a cat is that kind of thing. Because you're doing the thing. Getting that break. prefer this pen or micron pen? I actually prefer this pen. I really like this pen. And they're waterproof. You'll see in a little bit I'm going to go into this with uh, a Copic. And the Copic will not smear it. It's the eye of the tiger. I should grab this for a Zootopia sequel. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. See, now I can't help but sing. You know, it, if you sing like your character, or talk like your character, the drawing comes out better. <laughs> it's the eye of my species. <laughs> it's the eye of me. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. But I just add a little tweak to it. You need a line for a king of rock, rock and roll now. <laughs> yeah. If I've never drawn before, which of your tutorials uh, do you recommend? Well, I've got drawings on character design that talk about the basics. I've got character uh, tutorials on lessons on 
uh, anatomy, which is some place that you should start. Um, there's uh, we've got quite a few play things in there, but those that, that's probably where I would start. So here's the other fur over there. So I want to make sure I have the same tuft of fur on this side. Working in the same you know, perspective. <coughs> I can hear him say. So I'm drawing in the direction of the fur as well. They're saying it's a dumb joke, but the new lead singer of the 80s metal band, Striper. <laughs> YouTube question. Hello, Aaron. You probably get this a lot, but what would you recommend to someone who wants to get into digital drawing to focus on first? And what starter tablet would you recommend? I would probably get, if you can afford it, go right to the top. So um, I would get a Cintiq pen display you can probably get a uh, a 16 inch would do you fine if not get it get an Intuos Pro because that's just as good you know for if you don't mind looking somewhere else I mean think I shouldn't say just as good because I don't think it's just as good but it's it'll get you started is what I should say and um, uh, and as far as focusing you know you, digital drawing to me and digital painting it's no different than uh, traditional as far as the fundamentals go because you still need to understand form and shape and light and all of that and so I would still focus on those elements and just because you're digital drawing or painting doesn't mean you're putting your traditional stuff away I would recommend that you draw traditionally as well because it really will help help uh, it'll help you, your, uh, your, your digital work as well I know your lessons are digital, but do you think you'll have uh, lessons in book format uh, later too? We have definitely talked about doing it. We just, uh, at some date, we will, yes. Book formats is in like like forming a uh, portfolio? No, just like book, or? Less book form. Just book, do oh. we have, well, we have lessons you know, where you can buy a book and have a lesson. Oh, 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 that kind of book format. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> here we go so you saw how long of a struggle that was and yet here we go I can, I'm coming up with a lion that I'm actually kind of liking just thought of a different version of the tiger changing his stripes like a curvy tiger taking off its stripes at a stripe club <laughs> 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 I don't get it. Did I, wait, did I miss something? A stripe club, taking off his. Oh, stripe, stripe club instead stripe. of strip club. Gotcha. <laughs> that one was a little bit of a reach for me. A bit of a reach, yeah. Yeah. Still staying loose. Let me see where this arm is going to go. I want to get these arms in. Uh, <laughs> Bringing that down, down to the ground. Do you clearly see uh, in your mind what you are wanting to achieve as a finished piece before you start working? Um, 
No, I have to find it. You saw, you guys saw how much I'm struggling to find a pose. Sometimes it just comes to me. Um, but more often than not, I'm struggling to find the clearest way of staging something. And, and uh, uh, so, yeah, no, I don't always see it. But once I, once I get it kind of square, then, yeah, I, I can see it pretty good. So it's one of those where it's like you, you have the idea of what you want as a subject, but just trying to figure out the right pose and competi composition of that po of that uh, subject. Mm -hmm. Have you tried Blender? What's Blender? No. I have not. Nolan Taylor said, uh, titles this as Shar Khan sings his hits. <laughs> this one, I admit, does have a little Shar Khan vibe to it just because of the big, the longer nose. Yeah. Provo. Make sure I get those folds right. Get them Twitch forward. question: How do you develop patience? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have patience. What What is this thing called patience? I've never I've never heard of patience. <laughs> How do you develop patience? Well, first you take them out of the hospital. <laughs> But how, how do you get them out of the hospital in the first place? Do you just throw them out the window, or do you, do you take just throw them down the stairs while they're still in their wheelchairs? There we go. What is Blender? Do you know what Blender it's is? Another digital painting program, I believe. Uh. YouTube question: Would you ever recommend taking a break from art just for a day when you're <laughs> when you're in a draw? Yeah, I don't draw every day. I mean, I'm drawing every day for the next few weeks, but. There's plenty of times I don't draw. Following on from the comment, knowing visualizing the image as you draw it, uh, do you ever hit a block? Like you don't know what to draw or nothing inspires you? If so, what do you do to get it back? A great drawing as always, by the way. Oh, I just, you know, like this one here, I struggled to get this one right. There was kind of a block there. I wasn't, you know, I had a suggestion. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I just don't give up. I just keep drawing and drawing and drawing. And even if I have a block where I don't know what to draw at all, I just force myself to draw something. Doodle. I'm left-handed and been told that we are more creative. <laughs> do you believe in that? No. No. Now I do think there's a lot of I you know I, there's a lot of left-handed artists artists. I, there's probably. Per capita, you know, as far as the averages across, um, all the way across society compared to art, there's probably more left-handed people doing art, but there's a lot of right-handed people doing art that are way more talented than, than, you know, a lot of left-handers I know, so, uh, um, you know, definitely, I don't think we... I don't think we have the uh, the corner on that, so to speak. Uh, so Blender is a free animation software. Oh. It's like for three D modeling and three D animation and all that. It's it's an open source Maya, basically. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was uh, a painting program. And someone else is saying it's a scaled down version of ZBrush. There we go. There's our microphone. 
So come in. Left hand, left-handed people are in their right mind. <laughs> that is true. I'll give you that one. <laughs> For the clothes and the pose, I'm rather imagining him singing Stand By Me. Come on, man, I thought you were going to pick it up. Nah. <laughs> Just gonna leave you hanging. <laughs> Alright, we gotta get this. Time for the microphone. Ooh, look at that. Nice cave. That there's a nice cave. Bingo! A mic? Now that's a mic. That ain't a mic. Now that's a mic. Stand by me. Only reminds me of Timon and Pumbaa singing it in their cartoon. I remember that. I loved watching that all the time. It just Timon and Pumbaa. Timon and Pumbaa. I think it was. They sing. They sing. The lion sleeps tonight. I don't no, know. no. They they did a separate music video sort of deal. It was oh. it was an open short or an opening short, and I think they did it up front of. It was either Honey I Shrunk the Kids or the Goofy movie. Had to have been the Goofy. No, movie. no, no. Actually, no. It was. It wasn't either of the. God, what was it? Come on, man. You're leaving me hanging. <gasps> Can't uh, I wonder if it's Googleable. Googleable? Googleable. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Of course I've seen Game of Thrones. Who hasn't seen Game of Thrones? No, I know there's a lot of people that haven't seen Game of Thrones. But no, I've seen it. I love it. I'm really excited about the new one coming out on Amazon. The uh, what was that called? Cannery Row. Carnival Row. Carnival Row? <laughs> Cannery Row. Where'd I come up with Cannery? Carnival Row. So I'm just, you know, when I'm doing drawings like this, I'm just staying loose. Oh, that's what it was. What? It was, um... Appearing amongst the trailers at the beginning of the Best of Roger Rabbit shorts. Oh. That's what it was. It was also accompanying the theatrical release of Tom and Huck back in 95. So, yeah, so it was in the, the Roger, Roger Rabbit collection. Gotcha. That's what it was. I worked on Roger Rabbit. Not the original. I love animating Roger. This cool drawing. Almost. The tiger almost looks like uh, uh, Tony Bennett. There you go. Tony the Tiger Bennett. And Tony the Tiger Bennett. Hey, he's a really cool cat. We got a cool cat here for him, man. Hey, it's Tony Bennett. <laughs> You ever see Alec Baldwin do Tony Bennett? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. He love does him. it so perfect. Oh my god. Also, Amazon has a Lord of the Rings series coming. Can't wait. I heard about that, that they're doing a um, they're doing a series yeah. in the Lord of the Rings world. Yeah. It'd be pretty 
friggin' awesome. There, see? Take enough time. If you're patient. You can get it to work. I was struggling on this drawing. Ooh, yeah. You also do cross edge? Yep. I'll just I'll do whatever it takes to get it to, to look right. You'll see that even though I'm kind of hatching, I'm kind of following the form. I don't mind being really messy in the areas that aren't the central area of, uh, of uh, attention. <laughs> he says, uh, it's great. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Have you worked or known uh, Richard Williams? I get this question every day, every uh, stream as well. Yep. Uh, never met Richard Williams. I used to work with his son, Alex Williams, who's a very cool dude. And then Alex went off to law school, became a barrister in England. And then he went back to animation. Guy is super smart. But the real question that everyone's known is, did you ever work with Walt Disney? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you about the times I had with Walt. <laughs> that is none. <laughs> yeah, I've got a. I've actually, I've got a picture uh, with Walt. Uh, I, I had, I'd lost it for a while, but um, uh, where is it? I'd lost it for a while, but um, Tim Hodge found it for me and sent it to me. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Let's see if I can pull this up. This is back uh, in their first studio. This is back in our first studio. I am third from the left uh, with Roy Sr. Oh. Right here. If you look, you can see me third from the left with Roy Senior, and uh, and then Walt is on my left, uh, on my left. Walt <laughs> just to the right of me, and uh, Roy is just to the left of me. And uh, you know, we were celebrating the studio. F we we're celebrating the studio first getting open, so I had a cigar, <laughs> and uh, and we were yeah, we were having a great time. I love those pants. I miss those pants, man. And, uh, and this, I was one of the first hippies. You know, this is 1920s or early 30s, I can't remember. Uh, but I had long hair, man. People tease me all the time. But there I am, third from the left, right there. Yeah. When did you make that? Uh. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> when did I make it? What are you talking about? Tim sent that to me. Uh, YouTube comment. You can also do 2D animation in Blender 2.8, similar to TV Paint. One thing I've been wondering, when you say to work broad, what do you mean? I mean work loose. Don't get, you know, when I'm, you know, you see when I'm drawing, I'm drawing really loose and then I'm, I'm drawing broadly. That's what I mean by broad. I'm doing, I'm being loose. That way you can see that the line work on this is pretty scribbly, but when you step back from it, it comes together okay. So now, now, I want to get in here. Everybody wants to be a cat. Because the cat's the only cat. Have you heard Ronnie sing that? Huh? Have you heard Ronnie sing that? Uh, everybody wants to be a cat? Yeah. I don't believe I have. Ronnie's got a great rendition of that. And, uh, Ronnie someone's Wilford. Asked, someone's asking me if I can talk like Stephen Fry. I, I just looked up who Stephen Fry is, and I cannot. <laughs> he has like such a posh British accent. He's the um, he's the actor who plays as um, uh, uh, Sherlock's brother in a. Uh, um, Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, Sherlock Holmes. Game of Shadows. He plays as Mycroft. The bigger older brother. Yeah. The bigger elder brother. Yeah, I... 
I haven't really watched that much of him, so I can't really can't really go. pull it off that well. But going up here. <laughs> What is the bear statue on the right from you, uh, on the plank in the closet? Huh? Where's it from? The, the, bear, the bear statue. statue. You're right. There's no bear statue. What are they looking at? Is that a, that's not a, maybe the, the skull? Bear statue? On the, what are they saying? What's the question? Uh... What is the bear statue on the right from you on the plank in the closet? Don't know what it, what you're talking about, bud. Hey, bud. <laughs> Might want to sit there and let, let it marinate. Have you met Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> well, only in passing. I wouldn't say I met him, but we, we were definitely aware of each other. I mean, you guys encounter each other at the theater, right? No, I mean, if we did, hey, things might have been different. <laughs> so, if I want to have a chance to get one of these, I'm assuming I would need to be at the expo on Friday. Yep. You got that right, bud. Got that right there, bud. <laughs> Is that white, white ink pen? Where can I get one? This is called a jelly roll. I, I order mine online. I order boxes of them at a time. You can just go on uh, Amazon. And uh, this is a jelly roll uh, uh, 08. And then I also use a one right here. Here's the one. It's an even thicker line. It goes down nice and thick. If you have any of these drawings left over, would you consider selling them on your website? Maybe. Yeah. Yes, that's the whole point of doing these is to sell them. So, yes. <laughs> I'm being really jerky about it now. Only if you come to uh, Lightbox. No, but um, they're pretty, we have a pretty sneaking suspicion that they're going to sell out. Um, that's the reason I'm doing as many as I'm doing because I'm trying to do it according to the demand that we've got so I think uh, I don't know that we're going to have any left over but if we do we will definitely put them on on the site Sherlock's Brothers played played by the legendary British actor Stephen Fry yes I was talking about that just earlier uh, jelly roll pen. Uh, is it true that you're Nolan? Oh no, Nolan Taylor's asking. Is it true that you're Nolan Taylor's biggest fan? <laughs> were you were you in the construction of the pyramids? Yes, I was there. Corey says, "I love your use of." They were supposed to be cubes. Oh, they're supposed. Yeah, to be they cubes. messed up. They I love your use of white highlights on gray paper. I just started using gray tone paper in my art, and I really like it. Thank you for the inspiration. Well, I am glad that you got inspired. <laughs> Good times with Walt. Oh, yeah. Walt, what a kook, man. What a kook. Peter. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter, you're turning into a kook there. Uh, Lindsay says, I sent, sent your uh, friend request out to the master class. Still nothing. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry, Lindsay. I, uh, I'll run back through. I get a, uh, I get a lot of them, and I... I to be honest with you, I don't really look at them because I'm, I'm so caught up with other 
social media, so I will go back and check. That sounds really, for lack of a better term, douchey of me, but sorry. How many T-Rex have you seen in the wild? What'd you say Jurassic <laughs> Park did a good one? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's pretty good. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say Jurassic Park did a good one? <laughs> I mean, you have first-hand experience right, seeing right, T-Rex yeah. in the wild. <laughs> uh, T-Rexes actually did have a little bit more feathers, but no, it was pretty good. <laughs> the southern T-Rexes were a little bit more bald, so it was close. <laughs> southern T-Rex. <laughs> You taught Walt everything that you knew. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we got a little tiger going. A little tiger. <laughs> Fun fact, Aaron actually drew saber tooth cats from life. That's why he's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I wrestled them. <laughs> oh, you don't draw them, you wrestle them. I had one. His name was Toothy. Toothy? <laughs> yeah. So instead of Toothless, it's Toothy. He was Toothy. Go to my one again. Toothy, such a big tooth. That's quite a big tooth you got there, bud. Hey, bud. mouth breathing can you hear me <laughs> look I'm Barney Rubble chiseling on a stone tablet <laughs> nice <laughs> that is definitely a Tim Hodge illustration Oh, yeah, totally. You know what the irony is? What? Tim is older than me. Really? Yeah, I just look older. Been th I've been cursed with this since I was a kid. I could buy beer at the age of 14, practically. My favorite Bible story is about Aaron and Eve. <laughs> 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 it's pretty good. They're getting good. Like you walk up to Eve. Hey, how's it going? I'm Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> May have seen me around a little bit. And I drew. I was drawing a snake over there. I saw you over here. So <laughs> walk over, say hi. Are you gonna Are you gonna eat that apple? <laughs> How about a T-Rex dancing hip-hop, but while trying to do a handstand flip, big trouble, short arm issues. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So there's my crooning tiger. Everybody, everybody, everybody wants to be a cat, yeah. The eye of a species. You can go do one more. What time is it? It is 2.49. 2.49. So we've been at it for almost two hours now? Almost. Well, I could probably do one more. A small one. So here's what we got so far today. 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 We got this guy here today. We got a couple of sketches done the other day. And this one here today. And then where's the other one? These guys, I get these this morning. Singing, on, singing a song. That's a pretty good drawing there, bud. 
So yeah, tell you what, I'm just going to do something quick. Like a, I'm just going to do a something in the style of of uh, Heinrich Clay, which who I like so much. That one got trashed. I'm just going to do an elephant, an elefante. We'll do one more. Elefante. And once again, I want to rec remind you if you can jump to the. Uh, um, Dustin, if you can yes, jump to the um, some of the slides, the pant my Patreon, my Patreon page. Uh -huh. um, we, I think we, I think we will put some of these on Patreon. I got to talk to Nick about it. This could be an ongoing thing, and um, and maybe we'll do like uh, raffle giveaways or something for originals, but definitely digital copies, and. Um, uh, so yeah, please, you know, if you can support us, it would be really great because um, it really does help us. Every even even every little bit, you know, helps for us to give us time to uh, create for you guys. All right, water. Ne next one. The yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, and, uh, uh, lightbox. I just want to mention lightbox again. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't forget, we are going to be at Lightbox September 6th through the 8th. That's why we are doing this. This is why we are drawing. Um, I'm gonna have, we're going to have our booth there. We're going to be promoting our site. We're going to be talking about education. I'm going to be speaking on different uh, subjects such as painting and character design and animation, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, uh, and then we're also going to be selling a lot of art, original art, prints, all kinds of stuff. So it's in Pasadena, California, September 6th through the 8th. Uh, and so check it out. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We've also got a back to school sale happening at creatureartteacher.com. And that is 25% off everything on the site. And if you guys are going back to school, you know that it can get a little costly. And these uh, lessons will really help you out. Plus, if um, you're looking for a membership, or uh, uh, streaming, you can get up to 50% off if you're a student or a, uh, a teacher. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to get back to it now. And um, What about the uh, perspective course? Oh, the perspective yeah. course too. The perspective course, uh, uh, I just finished a brand new course on linear perspective. It's in pre-sales and it is uh, up for sale right now on our website as well. And uh, so go check that out. Uh, creatureartteacher.com it's linear perspective it covers one two and three point perspective it covers projection it covers all kinds of stuff so go check it out so here I want to I want to get a nice kind of fluid pose but do it with an elephant Erica Bay became a patreon member today hey Erica thank you And uh, Severe Valen says a book subscription would be awesome. What? A book a book subscription. Book? Like turning these lessons into into books or something? Like Oh that. yeah. That would be awesome, huh? Yeah. So I'm drawing an elephant. And he's feeling fabulous. Aaron, that tiger you, you drew was great. <laughs> Thank you. So what I'm trying to do here is I think of I think of you know when I'm drawing animals, I break them up into a head, neck, shoulders and arms body like we have here and then hips or pelvis and back legs and then tail so is he you're trying to draw drawing an elefante elefante so here I want to put a twist to him I think I'm making them too big for the page, which is something I always do. Oh well. So Are you at the Lightbox Expo every year? Yes, I'm going to be there every year. 
So now we got to get back and just get get uh, more careful with my size. Is this year the first light box expo, or is this or is this is the first one? Oh, I'll give you. A, I'll do an African elephant. I want to show you if you're drawing a head. But you've got this hourglass thing. But here's the here's the head. Coming over there. Here's the eyes right here, and then it comes in like an hourglass. The trunk comes off of here. The tusks, I mean. Will this series of drawings include birds? Oh, I'm sure I'll have some birds in here. I'm sure I'll have a bird or two. So here's here's a there's a head. You can see this hourglass shape, the dents, you know, the off the the, the eye sockets where the eyes are. You get a big dent in the skull here. And then the cheekbones are way out here and then it goes under for the For the uh, jaw, the lower jaw, we're looking down on on this guy. What kind of pencil are you sketching with right now? This is just an ebony, an ebony pencil. So we get those ears come back. make him, you know, elephants can't run, but this one will. here and this other leg back here boom like so turning that head a little bit. Actually, you know what I might do? Hey, Dustin. Yes? You know what I might do? What? That, was, that, that question was directed towards you. I'm going to turn the head. Make it even head. more dynamic. Yeah, watch this. It's like magic. magic. Simon suggests a punk squid. Sid Vicious. <laughs> squid Vicious. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, at Lightbox, we're going to be in on, uh, booth 203. Thanks for that, Dust, uh, Nick. Oh, I want to give him more call, neck. Call him Dustin, didn't you? I almost did. tangent on this foot. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be a fun drawing. Put cape on the elephant like Superman. Oh yeah? <laughs> go. Aaron, I'm finding it really... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
And I'm finding it really jarring trying to simplify my work for animation as opposed to games where it's highly rendered. How do I get over this? And Dustin, please, can, can we have some Elvis? I've already been doing a lot of Elvis, but for your end, uh, how do you get over um, highly detailing animation? Or, like, how do I simplify that? Uh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you other than you got to just be more disciplined. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to be super detailed. So, get you know, discipline yourself to stop doing it. I'm gonna stretch this arm. Oh, see, I want to not clear a silhouette, so I'm gonna bring this arm way back here. There we go. I'm being asked to give art classes to children from one to six years old. What? <laughs> Have you ever worked with children this little, and what advice would you give? I'm terrified. I assume I should just let them get messy with the paint. Yeah, just let them get messy. You know, there's, there's really no teaching a child that young art. Uh, it's really just uh, introducing them to it. So, you know, let them explore color. Let them explore, um, you know, all of that stuff. Of that, you know, it's, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. I had to give a, a lecture to four year old kids in China. That, uh, that scared the heck out of me. There we go. The running, running elephant. Uh, Sander Drave says, Hi, Aaron and Dustin. It it has been a while. It's uh, been a while <laughs> since you did some urban sketching <laughs> on uh, since you did some urban sketching on location such as temples in Japan. Uh, next year will be a huge urban sketchers symposium in Hong Kong, where a lot of artists uh, are going to be going to give workshops how they approach sketching in urban areas. Uh, are you interested in doing some workshops there as well? Good luck with all the activities. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love. Uh, did they say Japan? Uh, it's in Hong Kong. Oh, no, Hong but Kong. you did, but you did do uh, sketches of temples in Japan. Yeah, and I, you know, that's and it's awesome doing that. I'm gonna stylize his nose a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, we may or may not be there next year. It's something that's definitely very cool. But like I said, we're we're also trying very hard to. Uh, knock our travel back a little bit. Actually, I'm going to let that curve come right around. You get a nice clear silhouette right there. Nice. Nice slow even curve. back a little bit and then we've got a drawing so you can see that a lot of times I'm building the drawing I'm finding what works what doesn't work um, so here I've got a drawing that I feel is nice and you know decent enough that I can get in and have some fun with it there we go and now I'm just going to get in there with my pencil. With my pencil. My pencil. I like getting nice and detailed on that eyeball. Right on that ball of eye. Have you ever worked with an intern who had the mindset of a one one to six year old? <laughs> yeah. Definitely worked with interns that wouldn't listen. I know when 
I taught in arts and animals kids summer camp, I went with various ecosystem themes each week. Uh, taught them about the plants and animals that lived in different areas and had books and magazines uh, uh, out to let them draw from those. Oh, that's cool. But I even think, yeah, you know, what, she was saying one to four year olds. Yeah. So that's one year old. I don't. I don't know how you teach a one year old anything with art other, other than just here, go nuts. Like, all right, you open the can of worms. Oh, what was your worst uh, intern story? Oh, I just, um, uh, just, it, it's not, I don't have bad intern stories, just intern stories where they won't listen. They won't do what you, they, get, they won't take the advice that you give them. And then, then they fail, you know? So it's, it just takes a while for them to come around because it's, uh, a lot of you know, I've had a lot of interns that thought they knew better, or it's not that they necessarily knew better, but they just didn't have the confidence in letting go in the way that I wanted them to let go. I remember, uh, like, when I was working in the 3D business, at this point I was like, I worked there for about two years, and a new guy arrived, uh, and he was, he was new, like, he was on his, uh, 90 day probation, like, he wasn't an intern, but he was, he was still on that new phase, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, Is this the guy that said if you if you want your help you'll ask yeah exactly yeah, yeah. I mean that kind of attitude is just you know, if you can be nice with people like you were with that guy yeah and you know but if if they give you that kind of attitude back you just let them hang themselves because yep. that's what's going to happen and that's that's uh, what, exactly what happened a yeah. week later he got like a there was a question up there do I like do I prefer brown or gray paper um, I I like both anything that's toned I like uh, do you have advice for live animal drawing? I'm planning to go to the zoo and do some studies. Would you advise to pick two or three animals, study their anatomy, and draw just them? And what kind of supplies do you suggest? Yes, so you just nailed it on the head. I would, I would find those, you know, figure out what animals you want to draw, brush up on their anatomy ahead of time so you're not going in cold, and um, just go in with pencil and paper or pen, pen and paper. Um, maybe bring a little bit of watercolor if you want, but just keep it simple. And uh, and but the most important thing is, you know, get in there and you know understand that anatomy before you start, because uh, that uh, that really helps. And um, you know, it'll help you. You know, if you're struggling with getting some good drawings in. Uh, YouTube question. It would be interesting to know at what age you started to seriously draw and study anatomy. Um, I drew, I've drawn all my life from the time I could, I could hold a pencil. Literally, I was drawing. And my mother told me that I used to draw faces and, you know, things like that, you know, when I was nine months old. But as far as seriously studying and wanting to, to be, you know, looking at anatomy and all that, I was probably about. 10. But I wasn't that great by any means. But it's when I first decided that's what I want to do. I'm going to zoom back out. A little bit being pretty uh, pretty close to the hand with that with that much zoom <laughs> I 
feel if you had the opportunity to intern at Disney, you'd check the ego at the door. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? There's some idiots that don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best way I can put it. They were idiots. There's one guy, he had so much ego, and he got he got reprimanded for it. And so when he did his his uh, his thesis or his little you know student film for his intern film, it was basically just an uh, an animated foot coming down on Mickey Mouse and stomping him, and that was it. And then he left. <laughs> of course, he never got a job, but that was that was it. <laughs> Somebody else wrote. I can attest to that uh, for the Disney CP. The amount of people who. Uh, who go home in the first month due to ego is a lot. Oh, yeah. Are you ever going to uh, have a people portrait class in your on your site? Oh, you know what? That's a great idea, and I, I think we will. I don't do portraits a lot, and I wouldn't I wouldn't do a I wouldn't do a course, you know, because I, I you know I want people to be experts who create courses. So, and I don't consider myself an expert at all in in the realm of creating portraits but um, I do know a few guys that are and that's a really great suggestion uh, it would be interesting to know uh, Corey asked do you have any quick inking tips inking has always been tough for me well it depends you know like inking like this just stay loose and I try to follow the form if you're talking about inking where you want it to be more precise then it's really doing exercises that you know like like here get used to drawing that line and not picking it up just practice Nice clean lines. You know, just practice doing things like this. And then, you know, when you have when you're inking over a drawing, try not to pick pick it don't do this thing if you're looking for the clean line. <laughs> the person that said that she was uh uh gonna be teaching one to six year old year olds yeah so like, oh god just got told that i would give classes to children from one to sixth grade not oh. one to six years old what a relief <laughs> yeah that's a little better <laughs> but even still you know with first graders you really just you just want to have them have fun Don't get too academic with them. Can one get an apprentice with an animator? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure who or where, but I know it happens. Oh, hey, it's Chelsea from the master class. Hey, Chelsea from hey. the master class. <laughs> Just wondering, Aaron, if you worked on the Circle of Life and en environmental fable they used to play at Epcot. Oh, did I work on that? Yeah. No. Was that Chelsea? Yes, that was Chelsea. Ah. Yeah, you had nothing to do with the, um, the, that, uh, thing for Epcot. All right. You okay? Yeah, yeah so, so you didn't take part of that. Do you know anybody that did? Or did did the animation department have anything to do with that at all? I can't remember which one it was. I can't remember either. I'd have to see it. If it was 2D animated, there's a good chance we had something to do with it. We had a division within our division called Special Projects. And that's where a lot of our commercial stuff or in-house stuff would go.
love drawing elephants. Just thought I'd put that out there. Keeping it loose, baby. As my friend Amos Lee says, keep it loose, keep it tight. What's that mean? How do you keep it loose and keep it tight? Circle of Life uh, environmental fable was a 70 millimeter film shown in a Harvest Theater in the land of Pavilion at Epcot in Walt Disney World. Opened uh, January 21st, 1995, replacing Symbiosis. Symbiosis! The focus of the story was Simba. So it opened up back in 1995 and it closed February 3rd, 2018. It was a blind. It was based off a of Lion King, so I think that was where the question came from. Yeah, you know, it was, it was probably our special projects group that did it. Oh, Tim Hodge worked on it. Oh, did he? And he said I worked on that. I animated a couple of uh, Pumbaa and Timon scenes. Oh, cool. So it was done with, with special projects. Although Tim was, didn't work in special projects. so Yeah, it was, it was... Yeah, Tim says it was me, Chris Bradley, Rob Corley, Elliot Bauer, Alex Williams, and uh, Greg Dro Drolet? Greg Drolet. Drolet, art director. Ah, oh, poor Greg Drolet's passed away. Well, that's a good group of guys right there, I'll tell you what. Every single one of those guys is a good guys. Except for Tim. <laughs> He's great. There we go. So trying, once again, trying very hard to kind of draw in the style of Heiner Clay. And this was feeling uh, kind of fun, I got to admit. This one, uh, I'm liking the modeling that I'm getting with the pen. Simon asks, have you tried the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen? I have. Pentel, I think it is. It's a fantastic water-based black ink cartridge pen with a great variety of strokes. Yep, I have. I have. Michael Fudge says, I had the opportunity to put a, uh, to pet a baby elephant at the zoo, uh, and their skin texture is not what it looks like. It's completely different. It changed my whole way of drawing them. Yeah, especially when you uh, pet them behind the ears. It's like the softest leather you've ever felt. Yeah, when I, um, when I went to uh, the elephant orphanage in in uh, Nairobi um, you know getting together with all these elephants it's like playing with a whole bunch of puppies that want to jump all over you except the puppies are 500 pounds a piece see here I want to make sure I get those nice little fat rolls and all the subtle little rhythm changes in the arm Loose and tight equals light, right? <laughs> yep. I'm going to pull out a little bit more. There we go. You said that your favorite animated movie is Robin Hood. And but who was your favorite character in that film? I feel like it's a bit underrated. I love Robin Hood and Little John. Even the even the rooster. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the lute playing looster, rooster. Or whatever it is he's playing. 
Now, I didn't say it was my favorite. I said it was one of my favorites. My favorite is obviously Bambi. You know what the other one I always forget when we talk about, you know, when people ask me my favorite movie, yeah. animated movies, I always forget uh, Iron Giant. Oh, yeah. So this one, I'm feeling... I'm, I'm happy that I took the time to get this pose right before diving in with the ink. Because it's really enabling me to find the with the with the ink strokes really define the uh, the body shape and contours How would you feel if Disney made a live action Bambi? Uh, I would definitely go see it. So he says, uh, The Fox and the Hound, I feel, is uh, underrated. I don't think it's underrated. I mean, I think, I don't, I've never heard anybody say it was bad. Or at least I haven't. I think everyone that's seen it loves it. Yeah, it's just that not that many people have seen it, though. Or either that or completely <sighs> forgot about it. I mean, I think it's... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's a really great story. Um, is it the best animation? Maybe not. You know, I think there's some maybe some uh, films that they've done some better animation on but I definitely I love that movie I remember seeing it when I was a kid it was such a heart wrencher you should do a stream listing your top 10 fav favorite uh, animated films and why So here I'm doing the shading and very subtly trying to get through the shading and following the contour of the body. But I'm also cross hatching that contour so that I can get a, a, a subtle feeling of the skin, the roughness of the skin. Yeah, Treasure Plant definitely falls in the same category as underrated. Uh, Glenn Keane animated the scene with the bear in the Fox and the Hound. Yes. Yep. Matter of fact, I've got Xerox copies of uh, the bear animation. Have you ever thought about becoming a tattoo artist, like on the side, putting your beautiful artwork on a permanent canvas? No. <laughs> No, tattooing wouldn't be my thing. That's a whole other thing. Entirely. Yeah. I mean, I'd be so afraid to mess up. Yeah, with, with tattooing, there's no erasing or yeah. control or control Z. Yeah, it's really. Like, you miss a line, you miss a line. <laughs> Coming up with something I like here. So you can see if you if you follow the contour of the body, you can end up with some really cool results. done art uh, that people have gotten tattooed or got a uh, gotten a tattoo commission yeah um, 
I know several people that have used my art for tattoos. In fact, you did your your own art for your for your own tattoo. I did. Yeah. yeah I didn't know they did other art for other people to get tattooed. I I didn't intentionally do it. They just liked the art, so they had it tattooed. Huh. Go. Just gonna turn this around. Yep. Fun fact: Glenn Keen wanted to animate the bear in charcoal, but for some reason that didn't happen. It was probably stylistically outside the look of the film. Right. And the art director said, "Nah." <laughs> what did you think of the Aristocats? I really like Napoleon Lafayette. Charge! Do you know what? I can't remember the. Uh, I've only seen it what two, two or three times. You guys used to watch it a fair amount, didn't oh, you? Oh yeah. Hold up there! I'm the leader. I'll tell you when we say go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, George. <laughs> Go. Elefante. Elefante. I get that tail way down here. Says I would love a live action Treasure Planet. I would too. That would be. See awesome. that is, that's what I think would translate to live action really well. Yeah. Like I would say, good live actions would be like Treasure Planet. Uh, even like Journey, Journey to Atlantis, like those movies would be amazing in live action. And I think Mulan's going to be good. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that one. But there's just something about Treasure Planet and Atlantis that just feels like they should, they would do even more in in live action. You know, like li like in anime, they look great, but. There's something about them live action that just seems more interesting, you know. Question: Drawing birds, uh, birds characters, a uh, bird's knee bends backwards. Would you change no, that to a bend? bird's knee does not bend backwards? That's the ankle. That's not the knee. A lot of people think that's the knee. The bird's knee is up closer to its body, and it bends just like a knee. The ankle bends just like an ankle. Hmm. So what was the question? Sorry, I interrupted <laughs> you. But. But, yeah, so bean ends bends backwards. Uh, would would you change that to bend forward as human knees? Uh, if illustrating, uh, uh, for example, uh, in illustrating a children's book, like if you're drawing. Uh, characters in a more humanoid pro proportion. I guess. No, I wouldn't because you don't have to. Eric, no. can we see your tattoo? Uh, I don't know if you can see it. On, is it here? Uh, it's going to be silhouetted. They won't be able to see it, I don't think. Is that here? Can you see it? Yep. Let's get in front of the light. It's right there. So it's a portrait of uh, Karen, yeah. my wife that passed away uh, 12 years ago. There we go. Now, can you talk like the bat in Anastasia? <laughs> oh, uh, bell talk. <laughs> um, oh yeah, sure, blame the bat, what the heck, we're easy targets. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, Robin Williams, right? No, it was... Um, oh, no, Robin Williams was uh, from Fern Gully. Yeah, Fern right. Gully. Um, but the guy that did Bartok, um, he was the camera guy in the old, old Godzilla. He um, he does, like, over oh. half of the voices. Oh, uh, yeah, Frank Hank Azaria. Yeah. I'm just... Just going to do my job, sir. Going to give her a ha and a ha -ya, and then I kick her, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Can, you get, can I do Yao, uh, uh, Yao from Mulan? <laughs> King of the Rock. And I am Yao, King of the Rock. And there's nothing you girls can do about it. <laughs> but my favorite line of his, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> but he, yeah, and he does it kind of nasally. <laughs> make me look fat. Disney's also doing a live action Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hmm. I, don't know, I really, mu I really like the animated version, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. See how they make it. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Here we go. Almost there. We all just got a ticket to the gun show with you showing your arm. That's mostly fat. <laughs> So you say that was the show to see the little 22? Yeah, that's the 22. Do you have a favorite Mickey Mouse era drawing style? Like, I really like how they... How he looked and behaved in the early days, like the 20s and 30s era. Uh, Plain Crazy, Steamboat Willie, Mickey Garden, etc. Um, I, you know, I, I, I can see the appeal of that. I'm not a huge fan of that era. I like I like it when the animation got more sophisticated. The forties and fifties era, Mickey, I really I've really enjoyed. Yeah, I personally like the way they um, use that old old fashioned Mickey Mouse for that uh, animated short that they did. Uh, that was the <coughs> opening for Frozen. Yeah, where they. Did a mix of 2D and 3D animated. That was all Eric Goldberg. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I've been that. missing questions. Twitch question. How much attention to line weight are you giving to these sketches? Uh, well, it's it's really... Line weight is... is it, it's line amount, I guess. Because um, I can't vary the line weight on any of these pens. So it's just the amount of line that I'm putting in... Would you use Dustin for a voice if he had done another movie with voices? If I had a, a role that he fit, certainly. Is that a gel pen? This is a gel pen, yes. The white is a gel pen. Uh, what pen are you using right now? Sorry if this is our pen. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just answer it. <laughs> <laughs> gel pen. It's called a jelly roll. Jelly roll. Yeah. Is there a book or a resource you recommend as an introduction to animal anatomy? Um, there are other resources out there. Um, I don't know of any books specifically on animal anatomy. Um, but Terrell Whitlatch is a wonderful resource. Um, She's a creature designer and biologist, and um, her work is amazing. Terrell, Terrell Whitlatch. Amy Ro uh, Robillard says, please Amy Robillard! <laughs> I know Amy Robillard. Says, please hold this one for me at Lightbox Expo. <laughs> Amy Robillard already has some of my art. <laughs> I've got some of hers. Yes, elephant running through crowd. What role would Dustin fit to be? Like, oh, I don't know. What kind of role would I get? I don't know. That's a good question. That's a very good question. What do you think you'd be good at, Dustin? Uh... So I'm I'm adding a little bit of light on this on this leg and foot to pop it forward. I think my I think um, the role would just depend on what kind of characters there that are involved. Well, yeah, like. Oh, 
think I would need to see the art first before I can figure out a voice from. But. Yeah. But you gotta play it natural, too. I mean, the best voices, aren't they're not put on. Yeah. Nick says, that was actually a question about the black pen. Oh, sorry. Yes, the gel pen is tool. Tool. Just like Dustin, a tool. Yes, <laughs> I am the tool. T-U-L. Gel retractable pens. I got a set of 12 here for like 9 bucks. Great pens. Do you find that a gel pen is the best way to add white uh, to toned paper like that? Yes. Either that or gouache. You can do it with white gouache. And get a, a, it'd be a different type of look. But yeah. Let's clean this up a little bit. Bibbidi bobbidi boom. A person ask, asking the voice acting thing that says, uh, you'll be a singer, I think, maybe a jazz. Jazz. How's it going? This guy looks like he's goose stepping. <laughs> Glad I didn't do that one. There we go. Where's the audience at, Pally? There's a go. And that was Sammy Davis Jr. impersonating <laughs> Dean Martin. <laughs> Where's the audience, Pally? That's you impersonating Sammy Davis Jr. impersonating Dean Martin. Dean Martin. No, Lou, that is not a Naruto run. That if he, if the elephant was Naruto running, he would have both arms facing behind him. Oh. <laughs> What's Naruto? Is that the Japanese it, animation? Yeah, it's a, it's a particular style of running that was, um, brought out from the Naruto ninja series, where the quote unquote ninjas would run like this with their arms behind their backs. Oh, <laughs> and. It's the whole. It's become a whole meme towards like the Area Fifty One. It's like, well, we'll all Naruto run, so the so we'll outrun the bullets when they're when we're storming Area Fifty One. Like, Come on, guys! <laughs> like it's obviously a joke, but some people are like, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> Pretty how, much done with this one. Sorry, how, go ahead, Dustin. How can it? You go ahead and talk now. Huh? Okay. <laughs> How can an animator maintain his career after 50 years old? I'm doing it right now. Just keep doing it. Find other ways of doing it. I'm doing it now. I'm 51. There. Boom. Here's our running elephant. Boom. Oh, yeah. Bam. All right. Blah, 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 blah. I think we're done for the day. Or at least uh, I'm going to take a break. i got to get some food, man. You got to go to get some food? Yeah, I'm hungry. Hungry. Hungry like a rock. What's that mean? Hungry like the wolf. Hungry like the wolf. So there it is. So that's, uh, those are our ink drawings. We're going to be doing this on all the live streams because uh, I need to, uh, up until the Lightbox Expo, because I've got a whole bunch of drawings to get done, and they all need to be this quality or better, and I need to do a hundred of them. One hundred. Oh, are we here? Yep. Oh, there we are. I was looking at the wrong screen again. So anyway... <laughs> So, thanks a lot, you guys. Actually, go back to the down shooter. Right. So, I just want to review, again, what we've got. So, we got this guy. We got these guys. They were fun. We got these guys. Uh, we got the crooning tigre. And then there's a regular tigre. Tigre. And we got the ice skating elephants. Elefante. 
Dancing Elefante. Got the zebra. Zebra. More real. <laughs> I'll be doing a few of those. You got the. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's what he's saying. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing. <laughs> I see nothing. That's him. And then uh, my little flirty wall, uh, uh, hippo. Almost said walrus. But the way the 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 top of the eyes are is more like a. Did I do that? <laughs> he farted. He farted. He had a, a little bubble of a so, fart. So, um, so take this technique. It's a lot of fun, and uh, try it out. Get get yourself a nice black gel pen or uh, or anything, a ballpoint pen, and get that white gel pen. Those are great, and um, and try it out. Look at Heinrich Clay's work also. Really, really beautiful work. I'm, I'm, I'm such a fan of his work, and, and I've always tried to draw like him. Um, this one's probably the closest I've gotten uh, so far in drawing like Heinrich. But um, you know, but ultimately, you, you know, you want to draw like you. But it's okay to be influenced. And uh, this guy, it's, uh, he was a good one to be influenced by. So look up Heinrich Clay. Go check out his work. You'll be happy you did. It's really, really great stuff. And uh, so anyway, back to the camera. Um, remember, ex uh, the Lightbox Expo, September 6th through the 8th. It's going to be awesome. Um, we're going to have all kinds of stuff there. I hope you can make it. And then remember, I've also got a Patreon page that we would love some support on. Uh, it really helps us to create, uh, gives us the means to create more for you guys. And uh, we're going to be doing some cool stuff, like live streams where we're going to be reviewing portfolios and that sort of thing. So um, check that out. So that's at patreon.com slash Aaron Blaze Art. And then also we've got our Linear Perspective class that is in pre-sales right now. So check that out at creatureartteacher.com. It's 1.2 point, 3 point perspective, all kinds of stuff. It's got projections. It's got how to do shadows, how to do reflections. Um, all kinds of really neat stuff. So uh, go check that out. It's a very thorough course. And uh, <laughs> it's a thorough course. <laughs> and then uh, what am I missing? Oh, our, our back to school sale. We've got a great back to school sale that's happening. Everything is 25% off on the site. And teachers and students get 50% off of memberships and streaming. So that's a big deal. So uh, check all that stuff out. And by all means, I hope you guys learned something and had some fun today. And um, go out and put some beauty back in the world. That's what we do as artists. And uh, we need to make it a better place because it's it's kind of... There's some places that aren't so nice right now. No, they, So it's up really to us not. to make it nicer. Go out and be a positive force in the world, okay? Put your shopping cart away. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dustin. I hope you guys have a great couple of days. I'll see you on Thursday. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. Hope you guys enjoyed future streams as well. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys.